Wemo has just released their brand new smart dimmer that supports, yes, you guessed it, thread. As the first smart light switch to support thread, I've been real excited for something like this, but this thing might not be the best option for your smart home. I got one, installed it, been using it for a little while, and I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know, the good, the bad, and everything in between. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks so much for joining me. My name is Shane, if this is your first time here, and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using Apple's HomeKit, with new videos published every Sunday and live streams every Wednesday. So it's finally here, the first smart light switch that supports thread. Now full disclosure, Wemo did send me this here free of charge so I could test it out and share it with you guys, but there's no strings attached and you're gonna get my honest thoughts and opinions just like always. So this smart dimmer is currently for sale through their website and on Amazon for about $59.99 US. I'll put affiliate links down below. Shopping through those really do help support the channel. So I've always thought that light switches would be the perfect use case for something like thread technology. One of the big advantages of the thread protocol is that your thread devices create a self-healing mesh network giving you better connectivity and range of your smart home products, you know, over something like Wi-Fi, which the previous Wemo dimmer switches use. And since these dimmers are constantly connected to power, they actually act as a full thread device, meaning they have the ability to extend your thread network even further. These are designed to work exclusively with HomeKit. In order to take advantage of that thread capability, you will need a thread border router like a HomePod mini or the latest generation Apple TV 4K. If you don't have a thread border router, you can still connect to this over Bluetooth. They support multiple bulb types, including incandescent, compact, fluorescent, and LED, but you must be using dimmable bulbs in order to use this. This dimmer is compatible with neutral or no neutral wiring, which is a pretty big deal. A lot of older homes don't have neutral wires. Um, so, you know, if that's you, you don't have to worry. This will still work in your home. They are not compatible with three-way switches though. So that's when you have, you know, multiple light switches that control one fixture like you know, maybe at the top of the stairs and the bottom of the stairs, something like that. So they don't support these types of three-way switches, but I do think I found a way around that if you're interested. Stick around to the end of this video because I'll share a little bit more about that. Inside the box, we have a setup and installation guide, a cover plate, and we have the actual switch. Unlike most other smart switches that I've used, this one doesn't have those little like wire extensions coming from it. It actually has push in connections and the little screw terminals like traditional light switches. And I like this, to me, that just means less wires and stuff that I have to cram and tuck back in the back of that wall box. And then they do give you one little wire nut and jumper wire for the neutral wire, which is definitely good to have if you have neutral wires. So that's it, everything included in the box right here. So I'll be replacing an Acara light switch that I have here in this double gang box. I actually have it next to the Wemo Stage Scene Controller that I installed previously, which does also support thread. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that as well later in this video. So I removed the two gang wall plate and took out the old light switch. Went ahead and pulled off the Wemo Scene Controller to give me a little bit more room here. Always make sure you do turn off the power at the breaker before doing anything like this, of course. As you can see here, the switch is clearly labeled with spots for your ground, neutral, line, and load wires. I first connected the included jumper wire to my neutral wires. Neutral wires are usually gonna be that cluster of white wires grouped in the back of your box. Now to attach the wires to the switch. Here you can attach the wires by inserting them into either of the holes near the screw or by hooking the wires around the screw terminal like traditional switches. Either way works, tighten your screws and then screw the switch to the wall box. I turned the power back on to make sure the switch was working right. 
Then I went ahead and reattached the mount for that scene controller next to it, put my double gang wall plate back on, and boom, we are all done with the installation. Pretty easy. I should note, if you can't tell, these are standard Decora size wall switches, so if you have, you know, two or three or four gang wall switches in place, you can still use these alongside your other Decora style switches, like I'm doing here. So I'm not using that included wall plate that came with the Wemo switch because I have this double gang wall plate right here. I'll drop a link to the switch plates that I use and really like in the video description below. Now it's time to pair it with HomeKit. This product does not work with the Wemo app. It works exclusively with HomeKit, so you want to use the Home app to set it up. It supports NFC pairing, which is awesome. So you can just tap your iPhone to the light switch to begin pairing in HomeKit. Choose your room, change the name if you want, and boom, we are all done. Setup couldn't be easier. And as we can see, it is now working in HomeKit. Now, if you wanna check that it is indeed connected over thread and not using Bluetooth, I recommend using the Eve app. It's a free third-party HomeKit app that you can download. And in the settings, there is a thread network section. Tap on this to see your HomeKit thread network and all the connected devices. We can see here is my new Wemo Smart Dimmer and it is connected over thread and we can see that its thread status is actually router and is full router eligible. Again, that means that it is indeed acting as a thread router as opposed to just an endpoint and it is capable of extending our thread network and connecting other thread devices to that mesh network. So all that is really great. To operate the switch in the home app, you can simply tap the tile to turn it on and off. Since it is a dimmer switch, you can control the brightness as well by using the little slider. As with any HomeKit device, you can now use this in your automations or use Siri to control the lights and the brightness. Turn the Wemo dimmer to 2%. Turn the Wemo dimmer off. Turn the Wemo dimmer all the way up. Of course, you can control the switch manually as well without messing up your smart home controls or automations, which is one of the benefits of using smart light switches and why I'm such a big fan of, say, these over smart bulbs in many cases. Uh, but this switch does also give you some extra features, so let's go ahead and cover all that now. You can tap the top or the bottom button once to turn the light on or off. Tap and hold either button to dim the lights. If you double tap the top button, it will jump to the max brightness and double tap the bottom button and it will jump to the minimum brightness. Turning on and off the switch will revert to the last used brightness. Now you can also change the maximum and minimum brightness levels. To do this, you press and hold either the top for the maximum or the bottom for the minimum and the bottom right buttons for four seconds until the light flashes green. Then set the lights where you want to save them and hold the same buttons again for four more seconds. The light should blink white a couple of times letting you know that it has saved. So essentially you can use this minimum and maximum brightness levels or settings to save you know, your favorite setting, then just double tap to trigger it. That's pretty cool. There's a power cutoff switch here. That's what this is. You can pull out this little tab right here to cut the power. Let's say if you wanna like change the light bulb or something. I've never had to cut off the power to change a light bulb, but that's what they say and hey, it's there if you want it. Lastly, the button on the right is also the restart or restore button. So hold it for two seconds until the light blinks white to repair it to your network and hold it for six seconds until the light flashes red to do a factory reset. A little nervous that this is also the button used when setting up the maximum and minimum brightness uh, settings, you know, those favorites. So just be aware and be careful when doing that so that you don't accidentally reset your switch if you're just trying to set those max and minimum levels. So that's how you use the switch. Now let's get to my pros and cons because we do have some of both. First up, the pros, what I like about this product, and of course that is that it supports thread, which is great. Not only that, but it can extend my thread network as it is a full thread device, which is just fantastic. You can put these throughout your house and really help to you know build a solid thread network. I like that it works exclusively with HomeKit, no Wemo app, no extra features or settings, just simple, 
you know, Apple Home app. The NFC pairing is a very nice touch and the installation was very simple. Good documentation regarding both the installation and the setup. The fact that it doesn't require a neutral wire is a huge selling point, I think. Many homeowners are limited in regards to smart switches because of that no neutral. I really like that I can set the maximum and minimum brightness levels and control that at the switch. That kind of gives you, you know, a couple of like favorite brightness levels that you can configure and use there at the switch. They're flicker free and that seems to work really well. Just know that you must be using dimmable bulbs. I tried a bunch of different bulbs and as long as the bulbs were dimmable, they did work really well, even when setting the brightness, you know, to a really low level. Also an added bonus, I can have it alongside the Wemo Stage wireless scene controller as I've done and it looks great. They both fit into a standard decor size, you know, switch plate. They look really well together. It looks like they belong together. I did do a full video on that Wemo Stage, which I'll put a link below in case you want to check out that video next. All in all, installation and setup was super smooth. It's working great so far as advertised. But in the beginning, I did say that this product may not be the best option for your smart home. So what are the downsides and why in the world would I say that? Well, first of all, this dimmer does not support three-way switch setups, as we mentioned. That's kind of a bummer. If your house is anything like mine, then you have three-way switches all over the place. My house is full of them. That said, I do think there's a workaround that I do want to mention in case anyone wants to try it out. Now, I have not tested this, but in theory, it should work just fine. So if you have, you know, a three-way switch that you want to use this new smart dimmer with, wire one of your switches to be always hot, meaning that the switch is always on. That leaves only the other switch to control the light fixture. Replace this one with the new Wemo dimmer and then cover up the first one, the one that you wired to be always hot with the Wemo stage scene controller. Then you can configure the scene controller to turn on and off that Wemo dimmer in HomeKit. Plus, you get a couple little extra buttons over there on the scene controller that you could use, you know, to control your other HomeKit scenes. So this won't give you dimming capabilities from the scene controller, but you can do a simple on and off at least. And of course, you should still have full functionality on the dimmer. If you try it out, let us know in the comments below how it worked for you. And finally, the reason this product may not be for you is that Wemo has confirmed with me that this product will not support matter once that's released. Yes, even though it does support thread, this will not support Matter. So Matter, as you may or may not know, is the new smart home standard we should see roll out later this year. So if you are big on, you know, getting only products that will support Matter moving forward, then this one isn't for you. You should probably wait. They've said that there will be new Wemo products coming out that will support Matter. So uh, not to mention they are currently still selling their Wi-Fi dimmer right now that supports Alexa, Google, and yes, HomeKit as well. So I can see this getting even more confusing than it already is in the future when they start releasing, you know, Matter supported products on top of this one. That said, if you're all in on HomeKit and plan to continue using HomeKit moving forward, even when Matter comes out, then this shouldn't matter too much to you. Your HomeKit products will still continue to work with HomeKit even once Matter is adopted. And so far in my experience, this product has worked great for me. If you're all in on HomeKit like me and just need a single pole smart switch that supports thread, then I think this is a great option. If you're waiting on Matter, not so much. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think is support for Matter important. What about Thread? Would love to hear your thoughts. If you want a full rundown on Matter, what it is, how it works, all that stuff, check out the video I made right here earlier this year. It covers everything you need to know about the subject. Over here is another video you'll probably like if you like this one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.